Hey, it's Corn. Today I just wanted to cover the topic of selecting units when you're out in the wild. One of the biggest parts of modding is actually finding them. That's the first step. So my goal is to do a step-by-step -step for beginners as an intermediate, I would say, uh, modder. I wanted to make this accessible for beginners, especially people that I've been working with recently. Uh, trying to get them up to speed. I actually enjoy teaching people and troubleshooting. I think that's my strength is troubleshooting uh, problems that arise and finding solutions but uh, the first step in all of this is actually finding these units out in the wild whether they're at pawn shops or thrift stores or garage sales. You want to find these units and then you want to find out which ones have more potential so to speak. Uh, in my opinion and everything that I make a video of, of course, it's just my methodology, my opinion. Would never argue that there's probably better ways to do stuff, but I always find the easiest way that suits my abilities, which is what, you know, being comfortable with the situation is all about and being more productive if it's more within my wheelhouse, so to speak. So, uh, that being said, selecting a unit when I'm out in the wild, what I look for first and foremost is I like units that could be hard modded which would be the TSOP method which you can figure that out by looking at the plate so if you look at the plate you can see this one's already been opened this is how I got it but if you look at the plate uh, the date on there this one says 2002 12 11 so I, I don't know if you can really see that but I'm looking at the date right there so I, I know it's 2002 it's most likely going to be a version 1.1 1.2, uh, 1.0 even, um, through 1.4, and all of those can be hard modded. TSOP method, write a couple, you know, writing by soldering some points together, rewriting it, so to speak. You can see this one, a crystal unit. Uh, it's actually a 2004 819. So this one, very, very much, very likely is going to be a 1.6. And in fact, it is. I already opened it took the shielding off of it. So it is 1.6, it'll need a chip uh, or exchange the innards. Depending on what you want to do with it, I was going to mod that for someone who wanted a clear unit. Crystal unit got it from Canada. Yeah, some peeps up in Canada they are willing to send them for halo units with, which aren't as common over there. But anyway, back to selecting them in the wild. So looking at the plate is the first thing you want to do. Uh, if you're going to focus on hard modding, which I believe is more stable, then you want to go pre-2004, I believe April was the cutoff, so anything before April of 2004, you know you're going to have a chance that you're going to be, you will have the right chipset in there, uh, that you will be able to actually hard mod the unit. And then after that, say you walk into a shop that has you know, 20 of these guys sitting on the shelf, how do you select which ones are going to have more return on investment, so to speak, or have uh, more aspects of what you want, right? So for me, when I walk in, I want units that I can hard mod, so I look for anything pre-2004. And if I'm going to break that down even further, let's say I have a bunch of 2004 and below units, then I start looking at the disk drives. So the disk drives are different. In You have the Thompson, the Samsung, and the Philips drives. So the Samsung is recognized by many people as the one that has the most potential for reading burnt discs, especially the DVD-RW that you would need for the Hexen disc, which is where you get all the tools when you're modding the unit. And the Samsung has two holes in it. So when you're out in the wild, look for those 2004 models and below, and then usually you can find, uh, if you can find a power source, you plug it in, and then you can look at the drives to decide even further what it is that you want out of these units. So for me, I always look for the Samsung drives, which has the two holes in it. And then beyond that, the Philips drive, which is the second best option, or for some people it might be the first. You can see it has more of a circular disc tray, and then it goes to the back with the straight lines, but it's more circular right here. So that would be the Philips drive. And that's actually in a, I, I believe this one is a, a 1.4. 
Halo unit because it I cracked it open and I didn't see the fan on the on the processor, but I also didn't see the Telltale chip that shows me it's a 1.6, so I believe it was like a 1.4 unit. Um, you can see the Samsung drive. You want to take a better look. The two holes, right? That's a, pretty much a giveaway, and it's Samsung. There's different revisions of the Samsung, but the, you just look for two holes. It's going to be a Samsung, most likely. Uh, going to be a lot easier to read and write those burnt discs, especially the hex hexen disc, the one you need to basically has all the tools on it. Then of course you have the Thompson. You can see how the Thompson has more of a smooth disc tray hole. It just goes around. Uh, it doesn't say the I'm not sure about the lasers on all of these. The Thompson seem pretty reliable as far as laser quality. It's just their laser doesn't read as much uh, burnt discs as, say, the Samsung or the Philips. So uh, that pretty much breaks down the process that I use when I'm going out to look for units. First, I look for the limited editions. No matter what revision they are, would be a 1.6, whatever. I want the Halo units in good condition. I want the, the crystal units in good condition. Any clear cases you see out there in the wild, uh, any colored clear cases, especially XEM, Things like that are automatic buys if they're in the price range that I'm comfortable paying. Halo units, right? Uh, any limited edition you see. There's some blue ones out there. In the United States, those aren't as common, but those are the ones I look for first. And then you got the old trusty, you know, the dark black ones. And I look for the pre-2004. I know I'm going to have to pull that clock cap right away, but as long as it fires up, uh, there's a good chance that all I will need to do is pull that capacitor. And I check the drive because if if I have a choice and I was going to pick, you know, five of ten units or something, I'm always going to look for the Samsung drives or the Philips drives. But I wouldn't necessarily not pick up a unit because it had a Thompson uh, because you can always write with, you can sub supplement it with a Samsung or a Philips drive if you have another one handy from a donor box. Write everything that you need to on the unit and then swap it back to the Thompson for when you trade it to someone because they're most likely not going to use the hexen disc ever again or play burnt disc because you're probably going to load some stuff on the hard drive for them but that's up to you anyway so i'm corn or robot corn and thank you for watching this part of the video trying to make the entire process as i see it accessible to beginners from an intermediate i suppose uh, I look forward to making many mistakes as I'm making these videos and leaving them in so I can show everyone the process and the difficulties that I've run into and the ways that I've solved those problems is really what the point of all these videos are is you know, running into situations and fixing them, right? Overcoming obstacles, figuring stuff out, uh, showing it how it is, I suppose, is what I... I'd call it, but you know, videos for beginners from an intermediate, trying to make it accessible. Thanks for watching.